Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm mainly hiding behind a huge box. Yes, I've done a few little mailbag videos recently, but this one is huge. Now, as you may know, I'm a bit of a collector of lab standards. When I can get hold of them, I find them fascinating and they're great to work with. Now, in here, this absolutely huge box, there is all sorts of goodies in here. So I think in order to keep up the standards, let's get this big old box over on the bench and see what on earth have I bought. Well, this is a pretty huge box that's pretty much taken up most of my workbench. Now, I love a bargain. I can't resist. So when I saw this lot came up, I found this on eBay. And time to time, these things do pop up, usually well out of my price range. So I was pretty lucky with this one. Okay, it looks pretty well packed. What have we got underneath the tray of goodness? It's a whole pile of bubble wrap. Wow. Okay. Now, these were listed as mahogany test boxes, which I kind of guess they are. What I can see straight away is this standard cell. This is a rather intriguing thing, and I think we'll need to take a closer look at these in a future episode. This is a Western normal cell. You can tell it's a good one because it's got a thermometer on it. Amazon's here. Another delivery arriving. Cambridge Instrument Co. Limited, England. Right. There is some pretty nasty stuff in this. It's a very early form of voltage reference. But the... These are really intriguing things. And we've got the mounting plate with it. Oh, we've got some dates. I always love dates. 16th of November, 73. So it's measuring 1.018 volts. Nice. Okay. Oh, I've got to find somewhere to put all these now. There's a lot in here. What have we got? Oh, this. Look at this. It's beautiful thing this current shunt this is gorgeous look at this cambridge instrument co limited again number eight apparently it has a little bit of damage here and there but it gives it character but it's a beautiful thing isn't that gorgeous is that just me look at that 1.5 volts 15 amps few cobwebs on it but uh, we can give it a good old clean and a bit of love that is absolutely beautiful now there are some viewers that will probably agree with me in that respect and there are people who will think I'm crazy and what on earth am I going to do with this well what we're going to do with this is we're going to do some really cool experiments at some point that's what we're going to do what's next in the box of tricks Oh, look at all these little boxes in the bottom here. Wow. Where am I going to find room for all these? Oh, we've got an inductance standard here. And it looks like it's a bit worn away, but I think that's 10 millihenries. It is. It was measured as 9.996 millihenries an AC resistance of 3.46 ohms and a DC resistance of 3.41 ohms. This was tested at 20 degrees C on 800 cycles per second. Wow, okay. And it's got the reference number there. Unfortunately, no date of when it was tested. Townsend and Mercer Limited, suppliers of test equipment. <laughs> the feet have seen better days, unfortunately, but what lovely brass screws, look at the details. Wow, see, I get way too excited about things like this. That's cool. So that's a 10 millihenry standard. We can check some of these out in a minute. I'll grab a meter and we can have a look at these. And the next one, please. Oh, there's another layer. It's like a box of chocolates. It just keeps going. Oh, 
This is one Miller Henry. Fantastic. There we go. Again, it's had its test and it was 0 0.9997 Miller Henrys. Fantastic. Okay, I wonder what the colour dots signified. I get way too intrigued about these things. These look a bit like uh, where, where you used to have to chew fruit gums. Was it fruit gums? To stick the cash register down, to stop it sliding around. Show my age. Okay, that's beautiful. These will polish up real nice. We could be here for a while, viewers. Oh, we've got some capacitance standards here as well. Remember seeing these in the listing. 0 0.1 microfarads. Again, we can test these out in a sec. Philip Harris Limited, Birmingham. Philip Harris do a lot of the educational stuff for schools and colleges, or well, they used to. I think they're still going in some form or another. Okay, well, that's got no documentation on it anywhere, but we can give it a go. What I'll probably do at some point is, once I've given these all a good clean up, I'll do an episode where we can have a look inside some of them, like we did with the old decade boxes. I think there was three capacitance standards in this lot. Yeah, we've got another one here, 0.25. A random red sticker on there. Looks like it's had other stickers on it in its life. Again, nothing discernible on there. Oh, it's got something written on the bottom. High res. Apparently this is high res. Excellent. So if you're watching this in 4K, you get the full benefit of that high res. Okay, what's next? I'm just grabbing them at random. I know roughly what's in here because I didn't have a good look at the listing before I committed to this lot. 10 millihenries at 1000 cycles, one kilohertz frequency. All right. What's the, I haven't actually looked what the terminals are like or anything. I'm gonna give these all a good clean up at some point. They look all right. See how accurate they are. They're a few years old, we know that much. And this is a stand inductance. It's because it's got a stand with it. This is fascinating. What have we got here? Looks like another inductance standard. I wonder if these have come from a college or a school or something. It does look that way. This is one Miller Henry. See, look at that dovetailing down the side. You just don't see stuff like that these days, do you? I wonder if that denotes the department that it belonged to. Who knows? Now I can see why they had been listed as mahogany test boxes, because some of them do look a bit like they might be mahogany. I'm not an expert on timber. Here's a big one. This is heavier. 100 millihenries at 1000 cycles. Cambridge Instrument Co. Limited, England. Slightly different type of timber on this one. We're going to have to have a look inside these at some point. This one's got completely different feet. What's next? Right, I think we're down to the bottom layer. <laughs> We've got uh, 1,000 millihenries. Oh, we've got some data on here, look. This tested at 1,000.2 millihenries. That was tested at 19 degrees C on 800 cycles per second. This is clearly done on a typewriter. And they've cut the corners off nicely. Love to see that sort of stuff. Interesting though to see the colour difference between the two different types of timber in these. Between the 100 and the 1,000. Looks like we're nearly there. Very well packed, I will give them their due. Arrived nice and intact. 40 milli Henrys at 1000 cycles. They don't feel particularly grimy. They, they seem all right. I've got two more standards and then I think we've got uh, some sort of decade box, I think, down there. I'm gonna save that for last. Got another capacitance standard, 0.75 microfarad. And that's another Philip Harris one. Okay, 
I'm trying to work out what it, there's definitely something there. Maybe some sort of asset tag or something. Okay, right, we've got one more standard to go. We'll have a look at this decade box. This is a very unusual lot to get this together. 100 millihenries. Oh, so this tested actual inductance was 100.01 millihenries. You can't argue with that, can you? Okay. That one's got a slight rattle. I think it's just the terminal. I was worried there for a minute. I was going to say, none of them so far have been... No, we're good, we're good. None of them so far have been making any noises that they shouldn't. One last thing in the bottom of the box is this little beauty here. Now, this is a rather fabulous thing. If you like decade boxes and lab standards, you're in the right place. A variable condenser, type 3553. Look at these. Look at these. They've got these little circles here so you can select your value. This all needs a good clean up. This should all be nice and shiny. This will look beautiful once I've given it a good clean. So we've got times by 0 0.001, times by 0 0.01, and times by 1. Okay. So we go up to 10 microfarads there. Very nice. No other information on this one. No, it's got those same marks there though. That must denote something. Wow. Okay, that's it. Now, you may ask yourself, why on earth do I need lab standards? I'm not a testing lab. No, but I do do a lot of testing of various things, meters, equipment, stuff, general stuff. And also, I have a fascination for these. I think they are rather beautiful, and I just love having them around. They're all kept at a standard temperature. They're all looked after and they come in very, very handy when I'm testing meters and things. So this is a 40 milli Henry, and we can test this with our very modern gadget here, which is the LCR tweezers. And it picks it up as an inductor straight away, and it gives me a reading of 40.48 milli Henrys, which is not bad at all for a 40 milli Henry. Again, we can do some further testing with these down the line and we're going to have a good look inside some of these as well because I am I am rather intrigued and they don't make stuff like this anymore I'm not going to test them all because that will bore the pants off you I do get way too excited about these things it's a thing of the past so 100 millihenries and we're sitting at 100.8 millihenries so you can see these are going to be pretty good I'm not going to go through the whole lot. I will be here all day. But let's do a thousand. So we've done 40, we've done 100. Let's do a thousand, go on. And then we'll have a look at some of the capacitance ones. I can't test the standard cell yet because I need a null meter for that. I can't just put that on a multimeter because it will ruin it. Right, so we actually know what this one should measure. It should measure 1000.2 millihenries. Go on then, what do we get from our LCR tweezers? Do we get anywhere near that 1000.2 millihenries? Well, we're clocking at 1.01. .01. That is not shabby at all, is it? Not at all. Let's have a look at a couple of the capacitance standards. This is a 0 0.75 microfarad, allegedly. And I have got 749.3 nanofarads. That's seriously not bad, is it? That is not bad at all. I think these just need a, a good clean. 0.25 microfarads. Well, let's have a little look here. What have we got? Ha ha ha! 250.4 nanofarads. These are pretty darn good. I've got to say, they may be old, but 
That is rather fabulous, isn't it? What a fabulous thing. I would like to have a play with this. Because this is beautiful. This variable condenser by H. Tinsley & Co. of London. SE25. It's got its pat number on there and everything. Now, it clearly needs a really good clean, doesn't it? And it's... Is it missing? No, it's not. I thought it was missing its terminals. It's not. They're just screwed right in. All right. Let's have a little bit of a play, shall we? That's why we're here. Right, make sure they're all turned off. Vintage and modern working together there. All of these are set to zero. We do have a little bit of... Uh, little bit of residual there. I'm not going to worry about railing it out or anything at this point because I'm just playing now. I just want to see what I get. So if I go right the way up on this one, we should get more than that. 3.32 <laughs> 3 nanofarads. It's most likely that the contacts are going to need cleaning inside. 10.2 nanofarads. Oh, this range seems to work fine. This one, I would guess that it just needs taking apart and a good clean up. I mean, these are pretty old, so I'd be hoping for 100 nanofarads. And I'm getting 93. Again, it's most likely just needs a good clean up. I'm expecting a lot of it really. Nothing seems gummed up, nothing's stuck, everything on it is working so I would think this would be one that I need to take apart and have a look inside. Well there you go, that's quite a unique collection. Now I've been collecting lab standards for a lot of years and I haven't seen any come up recently for sale and when they do they are always way out of my price range so to be able to pick up these little beauties for a price I could afford I was rather surprised and rather elated to get this collection because this really does add a lot of standards in values that I didn't have to my collection as I say they do come in really useful when I'm testing meters and various things and they're nice to collect but they're getting rarer and and rarer to find and when you do find them generally the prices are way out of my league I am not on a big budget for this channel I'm really chuffed with these and I think we'll definitely do a future episode where we take a look inside some of them and of course we've got this decade box here that needs a little bit of love I think we can get that back up and running with no problems and it'll be fun doing it and just thinking up some experiments we can do with this beautiful current shunt. I'm sure there are many things we can do with these. Well I'm really pleased with that lot and I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at them and unboxing them with me. And it's a slightly unusual subject matter, but lab standards and decade boxes can come in useful for testing. Generally, you wouldn't really need them in day-to-day -day electronics, but they're a wonderful thing if you have got them. So thanks for watching today's standards mailbag. That was rather unexpected. I did not expect to get those items. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Big thanks to everyone for watching and subscribing. If you'd like to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated and it helps to support the channel so I can make more cool videos. I'll be back soon with some more tech related videos, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.